Hey, so we're back again with the Poly and Tracker, and yes, we're going to look at breakbeats. Now, the Tracker itself does have a good homage to breakbeats itself, like Amigas, the rave scene, uh, 90s music, like it's all good stuff. But the Tracker workflow offers us some really cool ways to actually deal with a breakbeat and slicing up and doing some really cool things. So, well, I thought let's go into how we can slice up a drum or drum sample how we can manipulate it, modify it, and then create some really cool drum sounds and then do some bass and that, and some nice live things to create a really nice song mode so we can let it run and also play live. So let's get straight into it. All right, we're back with the Polyan Tracker and I have a fresh project loaded up. And first thing I'm going to do is load in a break beat. So in my sample pack, if you haven't, I'll give you the link down below, just a whole bunch of sounds. And what I've done is I've gone through and generated a whole bunch of different aim and breaks. So I'm just going to grab this one and put it on the machine. Because back in the day, what they used to do is just have like a record playing or some sort of maybe even the radio, and then they would record them into like a Amiga or a tape, and then they could start meddling with it because it was really hard to get drum sounds. So we have the so somewhere there, so that's four bars. Yep, that's four bars. And I'm just going to zoom in just so I can get really close to that point there. And then I'm going to select crop, apply. Sweet, we got that as a nice little sample here. And then we're going to go back into the sample playback and we're going to go down to beat slice and then what we can do is hold shift equal number hit that confirm and that's put all nice even segments for us to start playing with this sound now when I did record this sample uh, with these ones I do try and keep the BPM of them because it comes apparent and we're just going to set this to 136 for now and we're going to look at programming one of these so when I first jump in here, so because I've got 32 steps loaded up, I'm going to chuck it into two step and just plot the drum back in. Now if we play that. Cool, so we've got that loop going and it is sampling this, which is that 136 BPM, which is matching the tempo. It sounds like the drum beat, which is cool, but we want to start manipulating and changing this up because we want to create some more variants. And one way we can do it, see how it's stepping through each of these points, we can switch them up. So if we got, I might want to, instead of doing F over here, which is that hi-hat, add some more kicks back into there. And then that was the first bar, and then I could change this one up, do something like cool. So I just created two different bars of drums, and this is where these breaks are really handy to get on because you can easily flip them around and really create some interesting grooves. Cool, so we got a break beat going, but I like to add some hi-hats to the side. So there is a nice little hi-hat sound in this aim and break. So what I'm going to do is plot that in, but instead of doing it that way, we can go shift up, uh, we go step count, we want to fill, so each step, so each step we're going to do a constant to from, but we're going to choose constant and we want random. And we can use the button grid here to actually make our selection. So we want that one, fill. Cool, but it's got a bit of weird sounding to it. Uh, I think it's conflicting with stuff in here. So I'm just going to go fill again. Each step we want to change the volume from two and we're going to change these two settings. So it's going to create random variants and then we hit fill. That sounds pretty cool. And another tricky effect I like to add on these drums, I'm just going to set it to two step. And instead of fill, I'm going to grab the panning one. And then I can just go left, right here. And then we've got some nice panning going on. So if we listen to that by itself, and we can raise it up, 
bring it back down. Cool, and for me, I like uh, having my hi-hats on the third channel. So if you go shift up, you can select everything. And I just copy and paste and move that across. Nice. So another thing I like to do with my sort of breakbeat drums is actually doing some layering. So I've got three channels that I usually leave for my drum sounds. So what I can do is I can bring in a drum kit. Now, I have created a bunch of drum kits for the Polyan Tracker, which you can download via the links below. But I'm just going to bring in one of these drum kits, maybe an acoustic sounding one. I like that one and I'll add that in. Now if I go back to the pattern mode, I have all these drums loaded up so I can actually program in another sort of beat, but that complements this first one. So if I listen in, so we got kick snare, so I can add a kick and a snare. See how it sounds a little bit different to sounds a little bit fuller and we can start layering a whole bunch of different drums up. So what I'm going to do is just sounds pretty cool. What other sounds do we have in? So we can throw in some little bits of flavor through here so we could do something. We'll set the volume of them a little bit lower. And that just gives us a nice little bit more flavor here. But now, because we're dealing with break beats and there was a lot of fun stuff they did with the samplers back in the day. So let's see how we can meddle with this sound here. Now, I'm gonna go back into my instruments and I'm gonna copy and paste that. So it's kept all the data that we originally done, but we're not messing with that original sound. And then go into pattern. I'm gonna select instrument, shift, insert, shift up. That selects everything, and then we go select that sound again. And then I'll mute everything else, and then we can have it playing while we're testing out the idea. So one thing I think is really important to breakbeat is doing a time stretch, which uh, they used to do on the Akai quite a lot. So if we go into the sample editor and go down here, we've got time stretch beat. Now this is a bit interesting when you first get into it, so I'm going to select the effect and what this is, is we know that we've got 16 steps, so we've got a 4-4 bar loop. And this is the target BPM. So right now we've got 36 BPM, so that's going to take the current state and make it 60 BPM. So that's how that one works, and then these two is sort of how the granulator will make its little granules. So you know how on the Polyan Tracker we have that uh, granular synth here, where we can scrub through the sound. And that's what it's doing to create our time stretch. So I'm just going to set this one back, go back into the editor, select everything. I'm just going to keep coming up settings, but I find somewhere between 250 to 300 makes a really cool sound. So if we uh, preview that, it plays it really quick. So we're just going to hit apply. We have the drums again. They're really fast now. Uh, all this keeps relative to the sample length. So no matter how much you move it around, these are going to stay in the same position. Uh, come back in here and then we're going to select our effect again and go back down to 136 uh, BPM. Now if we preview that. Ooh, sounds a bit spicy. We're just going to apply that and we'll come back into here and what we can do Now that's kind of cool. So that's really, you just fiddle with the settings in here and keep finding different flavors, but we still have that original one that we can work with and do some cool stuff with. So I'm going to keep that one because I actually like that. It sounds a bit more wonky than before. Uh, I'm going to paste in a new one and I'm going to fiddle with the instrument itself. So right now uh, we'll go back into here and we're just going to bump it up to that new one. Instrument parameters, I've got the volume. It's running off an LFO, so it's just going to hold the sound open for the whole time. Uh, it doesn't really add anything, but I'm going to remove so there's no sound. You can hear a bit of a click. 
but we're making like a really like quick hit with the sound. So if I play that one. And then we can. And I find this one really useful to create some like smaller tension sort of pieces. So I've got a few different drum kits going. But what are some of the effects that we can use? Now a really big one that I love using with I like using with these types of sounds is the roll command. Like I think this is like the sound of drum and bass. And on the polyend tracker we've got a few different types. Like we've got rolls that are just flat, and then we have rolls that go up in volume. So a little v means it's going down in volume, big V means it's going to go up in volume, and then you'll see a little n. So this means it's going to go down in the note pitch. And then if you go back up, uh, we've got the big end, which is up in note pitch. And then you have your randoms as well. And then this number is how many times it's going to do it per step. So it gets a little bit crazy. So what one way we can do it, uh, which is really easy, we're just going to use the fill command. Uh, each, actually instead of each, we will select. So we've got our note, we're going to choose it's called the roll command, so it's just there. And then we're going to pick a random amount, and same thing as before, we can use these to plot in the types of uh, things. So I like messing with the note position. So we go note, little note, and then for this one we'll go big note. So big note, probably four. So we've got more chance of notes rolling down, doing it really fast, and then goes up. And if we go fill, whoa, it sounds a bit chaotic, but we can just start removing ones that we don't like. It's not going to do anything. That sounds really cool. And it's not just for that, we can use it on our other drums here. And because this pattern's really full up, I usually try and throw in a few like, like fast rolls just with the volume. Something like that. Uh, maybe a four or a six. And just add some really nice cool sounds. Bring that all together. So we started out with one little sample of a break beat and we were able to bring it out into something quite more. And we've got a few tools here as well. And there are a few other ways that we can meddle with the sound, but I'm going to start building out this drum loop. So we've got two steps here. Uh, what I might do is I'm going to keep this pattern really clean just because I know I'm going to be changing up to make the different stages. So I'm just going to clean up a little bit. Cool. So basic drum loop, and then I'm just going to go duplicate pattern. And then what they'll do is give me bars three and four. Now I did make, so that's one bar and then you'll have the second bar, and then this will play the first bar again. And then what I do is I come down the bottom here and then I can start changing this up and then it makes it more of an interesting four bar loop. So I could do a bit of a, um, like say a bit of a fill. So let's have a go at doing something like that. And then if we listen to that. Cool. And we could do some things like, uh, say we select all that. Could do something like that. And we have like, got the normal drums and then these drums come in. But we'll start getting more tweaky a little bit later in this production. But I'm going to do the same thing again. Duplicate again. So now I've got 128 steps or I'm working in hexadecimal. So 7C means like, the seventh bar, third uh, quarter note, and then I can do the same thing again. So I could do a bigger fill, or maybe like I like to cut out. So I'll just do that, and we'll save that for later. But we can do a different fill here. So I might just take some of those out, uh, make sure I've got the right instrument selected, and then. Then we can mimic something along here. So if we play this all together. And 
Nice, I really enjoyed that. And that's giving us a bass sort of sound. All right, we got a really cool drum sound going, but I really want to add a bass line to this. So I'm going to check through my samples. Actually, I think I'm feeling, uh, not that one. Actually, we can do that. We can use a sine wave and I'm going to put on 13. So all my drums are from zero to 12 and then 13 to this one is bass lines and then all my leads and pads. So just trying to keep it a little bit organized, but I'm just going to add that there. So go into that and we have a sine wave and I'm probably going to make it a forward loop and just change the loop in. So it continually cycles. And then you heard a bit of a click there. So I'm just going to jump in here, uh, loop start. I'm just going to put it on a point where it's like pretty much over those points. I can't zoom in anymore. Uh, loop start, loop in. And then you play a high note and you can listen out for that click. It's pretty easy, but now I have a fully cycling sound. Uh, I might make it a little bit more aggressive. And then I'll use the cutoff with an envelope. Cut. And then we can sort of test the sound. All right, I think I've got an instrument here. And it's just from meddling around with the settings in here. Uh, I've added a lot of resonance, but it's a really strong cutoff. And then I did some work with the cutoff as well as the volume to get that sort of grungier sort of sine wave. So I'm going up here, listening. So then I can use this to sort of gauge what sort of sound I want and then I can actually hold control and play and then that will give me a time in to work with. So what I want to do is I'm going to keep all my bass line in track 4 so if you go shift record and then I'm just going to turn everything else off. So my live play is going to record in there. And I'm probably just going to record the actual pattern idea. So the rhythm instead of like the notes, and then I'll come back in and change up the notes as well. So we'll give that a shot and see how it goes. What we could do is because back in the day of yesteryears, these machines, they would have had a very small sequencer. So I'm just going to choose the first 16 steps. So because I'm using hex again, 0F to uh, 1. Now on the poly end tracker, we can do something like this. And we'll go back to that first, first bar to check. But all that extra information is still in the poly end tracker. So don't feel this is a destructive method, but we can use that to sort of sample what our little thing is doing here on the baseline. So I don't like that. So I might just go or shift, select, delete, and then set the steps to three. All right, I've got all this copied into my data. I'm just going to bring everything back. With it still copied, I'm going to go on to one, make sure I'm in step one. So when I paste, I'm going to be in that next bar. Now I can go through. Cool, so we've got the actual pattern itself ready, but it still sounds a bit flat, so. And then I'm just gonna hit random buttons, staying in probably a minor scale. Uh, you can sort of see where the note is, so we can jump around. All right, so I did a bit of fiddling with my bass line and I 
pretty happy with it at this point. So I added a little feature to my synth um, with the off command. You get that bit of a growl, which what I'm doing is having the release and attack um, at the same level. So it's controlling the actual cutoff here. So we can do some cool stuff. And if we put that in context, And really this pattern here is like sort of the template I'm going to go forth with. So I might cut some notes out to make like a slower bass line or add some jumps up and down to create a higher bass line. But this is a really good starting point. Now I want to sort of explore some sort of high end. So like with um, the old days I used to get chord stabs and then chuck them through as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to either make a chord or find a chord. Um, I don't really have... Me, we'll see what I can do. Actually, that could work right there. So I'm just going to add that and needs a bit of work, but we can do something with that. So it's a seven chord, and usually when I don't make it a capital or a little M, uh, it means it's a major. So I sort of know that, but they didn't really. It's got a bit of a sound when you like just record a straight chord like that. So I'm probably just going to we'll and we'll give it a bit and we'll go into delay settings. I'm going to turn on sync and I want to sync it to three. What happens when I go back up the top? Might add a band pass to it. And maybe we'll animate that as well. So I'm just going to go into the cutoff settings here. Actually, I think I accidentally changed it. So cutoff. Go to LFO, we're going to select triangle and maybe over 16 steps or maybe it goes above and beyond a little bit more. So we'll just plot something in. Uh, we can put it in step three. Actually, how's that sound? It's probably a bit chaotic, so we'll take the sounds interesting and I'm just going to copy make that step one and So I've just plotted in a new version of it. Now I've added some extra features to that instrument, but that sounds really cool. And I think I'm at a point where I could start actually piecing this together to make something that's really cool. We'll start expanding out the patterns, but one thing I like to do beforehand is I'm going to change these track names. So we go into this one, uh, record, and then we can edit. So we've got drums. Oops. Uh, all right we've got a nice little pattern together but now I'm going to start expanding out the sound so what I want to do before anything else is if you hit more I'm going to copy pattern come into here and then we're just going to paste pattern like that so we've got two duplicates of the same thing and I'm just going to make this one a lesser version so I've got everything selected all my things are named at the top now and Probably to make this less off to start with, we'll start with the drum break. So to make our drums less, I'm going to take out all those filler hits. So there's no ghost notes. Uh, we didn't really do anything to make this a little bit less, but we can switch this to that So 
so it's a little bit more smaller, but I want to just increase that size of the envelope. So it's a little bit smaller. Uh, Hi-hats can stay the same. Baseline, uh, what I might do is I'm just going to copy a version of that, and paste it there. And then I'm going to change the, change the cutoff and then I want to change the Leave it open a bit more. So if we So we've got lesser version. And then what I might do is make these like just hits from the major so I go C E C. Now I'm just going to remove everything else that isn't the starting note. So we can go like and then we take out those ones. Cool. So we got uh chord sound, so if we compare the two, so it's a quieter one. Cool, so we've got a stronger bass line, we've got stronger drums, and we've got a strong chord sound, so what I'm going to do, same thing again, I'm going to copy that pattern, and then we're going to go to three, and then we're going to paste that pattern in there. So this is going to be our more energy version, this is where we start going a little bit crazy, a little bit fun, so I'm just going to use the fill command to get a bulk of the work done. So I'm just going to go up like that. Uh, we go fill and I'm going to use random. So random, probably a lesser density because I'm going to fill up with roll command. So I don't want it to be like going every which way. And oh look, it's still got these, but I might put it somewhere. So we had the little V, so it could roll down in volume. We can also have a roll down in the noise and then we can have a roll up in the note value as well. So we are going to fill and then see what it did. It's actually pretty good. So in context with the layering, because some of these hits like uh, might take that out, but sometimes you can uh, blend notes, how this kick is sort of supporting this kick here. So. Cool. And what I might do as well is uh, the this bar, so number four, I'm going to select all of them and then I'm going to change it to that one. And then if we go down to this bar here, so the last bar, and I'm just going to select all, actually, should get it all. Select this guy and we get change it as well. Cool, and I just want to add some effects in here like I showed before. So I'm going to select that roll command and just stick around up here to add some. We might set this to six. So I'm always jumping in between. Then I can just go boom, push some buttons and see how that sounds. And probably the hi-hats can come in a little bit more. Cool, so we got a little bit of polyrhythm going. Cool, I really enjoy that drum beat. So how can we make our bass line more energetic? Now I'm going to take another copy of that bass line. Uh, we're going to copy that and we're going to paste him there. And I think we can don't know if it's going to be super cool, but we can, same as before, we want to select all the instruments. And push the cut off and I'm going to set the volume to a square. That's really cool. So what I did was I changed the cutoff to an LFO to create some sort of tremolo. But really what I'm doing is just cutting the sound out. So if we were to listen. Cool. 
And what can we do with this chord sound? Probably leave it. Uh, we could change it to something else. So I found this really cool sound here. And I think it can work with, with this one here, but I don't want to recreate all the settings here. So what I can do is copy, paste, copy and paste that instrument. And then what I can do is add over the top of that. And then what that should do is leave all these settings up here, but essentially I've just changed the sound. So if I select everything, it's a sneaky little trick, but it's nice to be able to keep your instruments, but change the sound inside of them. So I just uh, messed around with that new sample and did a bit of something else. And that is really cool because now I've got three different sections. I've got my normal and then my calm version and my little bit more full-on version. So what I might do is I'm just going to take these sounds and plot them into song mode and see what I can make with this. All right, so I've got my song bits here and as you can see, they're one to four, just those three patterns I have there and a spare one just down the bottom. And then I used it to plonk out this thing here. And it's really just copying blocks and pasting up here. And I just fill out the tops. Uh, D is uh, 13, so all my pattern data for the song is here and then I keep all these ones open for my uh, creating the patterns and for here I've got a basic layer I've hidden some bits like just in case I want to add a different version but really I have a bit of a structure and it goes through and then it gets into the main sections here so what I like to do with my break beats at this point is I can start adding those sort of uh, break beat Amiga sort of effects where we can use the tracker to fill up space in here. Like uh, say if I wanted to do a fade out or use a filter on something. So like say I want to do a sweep with a bypass. Um, I can go each uh, step roll. We want to select the band pass. So there's a few different effects here as well. Uh, so we've got overdrive, low pass, band pass, high pass, delay send, reverb send, bit pass. And some of those as well really help out as well. But let's say I want to do a band pass between, say, we'll go from two and we'll go zero to, say, full amount. So zero, full amount. You can also use this to do it. Uh, fill. And then if we just listen to that, take everything off. So it's a really cool way to add some extra elements to like build in and take away. So what I like to do is when I'm in this stage now, I'm really listening to how I can transition in these parts. So it's like the intro, I did a bit of work by going into the pattern and cutting the length. So it's only like a little bit and then it goes into like adding a bit of the little tappy bit. And then I was going to fade this one in here with a low pass. So I was going to do that. Fill, we'll keep those variables, but we'll make it a low pass and fill. So when it builds up, it will slowly build in the drums using the low pass. And then if we turn that off, nice. And then, yeah, I use that to create a few different effects here. So like, um, one thing I like to do like between a transition, so something like before this one going into this one, I'll s just hitting play on that line, we'll bring it up in the pattern mode. And I usually like to take away that and we'll delete those sections there. Put back on one step. So it's like a bit of a gap before it keeps playing. So it just gives a little bit of pause before going into the next part. It sort of opens up and then it like gives a little bit of a stop. Select the last bar. Maybe two bars. Something like that. Probably can't do it on the hi-hat because we've got the um, volume commands and the panning. Actually, we might be able to put on the panning, so we'll check that out. So I'm going to make a low pass, but probably not so aggressive. So probably start it from there and we can test it out. 
and then we will put that oops, I'm going to go into effect 2 so we'll cut the panning and we'll add the same fill which we'll probably need to plot in again so pick that low pass from 2 that, that, that one, that one now if we go back at the top And vice versa, we can do that to create a bit of a fade in. So, say we go back another two bars, so we're going up to 40. And we're going to select that one and go down. Cool. Fill. Oh, look, it's all nice and neat. But what we want to do is flip those values so we can do that and then start from 100. And then we got a fade in. And we'll do the same thing here. There we go. Fill. Cool. And like I was saying before, we're not just limited to all the, like, all these effects we can program in such a way. And we want to try and use as much of the space on the tracker as possible. So having a look at ways we can manipulate and play with these things, like we can do a bit of bit crush, uh, do a bit of other things. So like one thing I like to do is play with the LFO length. So create like shorter wobbles or longer wobbles. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do in here. And it just creates a bit of a change to the sound. So it's not like um, a static sound that's being repeated or triggered. We can actually manipulate the sound as it goes along. So if we play this section, we'll have that fade out and then it comes back in. And what I might do is I might bring in some extra ear candy sound. So making a little bit of ear candy, I've taken something out of an old Nintendo, so it sounds a bit like that, but with a bit of editing, it sound, sounds a bit interesting. And then what I might do is I might put in a random step amount for it to pop up. Uh, we'll try six and we'll put it on the off beat-ish. Try something, see what happens. I think I was going to add a little bit of overdrive because it's where the bass line kicks in. So we go up here, go to our bass line. Really nice to know where you're working. And I'm going to fill that from, say, start with 0 to maybe 80 because the uh, I might need to volume sculpt it as well. But we can... Oops, gone the wrong way. That one, from two, zero, two, try that one. So I've gone through my song, I've started putting in a whole bunch of transitions. So there's a lot of cutoffs, there's a lot of fading between filters, and I'm really liking this. So I thought, let's talk about some of the final things that we can do to make this track scene special. And one thing I really like personally doing, um, this setting here, anti-aliasing now, anti-aliasing is just smoothing out the waveforms but back in the day a lot of the software trackers didn't have ways to alias the sound so if you hear something from Amiga it's really crunchy so usually I like to turn this one off for my um, sounds uh, if you feel that uh, you want to stick to a particular scale and you don't want to think about where the button is uh, you can definitely change these ones up it does help in the process and you just want to change the pad layout so you have your octaves stacking and it just makes this a lot nicer to work with. Uh, you could also add a more aggressive limiter if you wanted to. So that's uh, your flavor. And in the master track, like I usually like to pick the loudest part of my song, which is this lane here. And then I can watch what's going on. So I know my bass line is probably the loudest thing in this track. And if I just go into the other masters, like I'm checking my reverb sends and that, uh, EQ could bass boost, it could extend the sound, but I might do that. I might finish that processing in my computer. So another thing too, just because we've laid everything out nice and neatly, I'm not just stuck to just playing this one live, like going up the top and then just playing from the start. I've actually got a few different options of playing this one, like uh, I can go down here or from the pattern, 
select these ones and then it's like you I would reorganize these so you have the lowest energy one medium energy highest energy probably a bridging one as well that would be rather nice but I can jump into performance mode as we can see here all these are lined up so I can just hit the play button and you'll see it's playing from that version there and then I can do all my nice juicy sort of takeoffs so and I can start changing patterns and then I can Sometimes they don't work, probably getting a bit carried away playing with it. But yeah, it just gives me a few options to play this online. Like I do, can just play through, uh, go do some things while on stage. But the other option is, is I can get a little bit more hands on and start playing with the sound. So yeah, I'm in a really happy position with this one. I might set up the camera and record this one, add some nice little visuals, but I'll jump on to the next part. And before I leave, final thing, make sure you go file and save your project. So I had a quite a bit of fun making this one and yeah, it, is, it didn't sound like a breakbeat that I was aiming for at the start, but it did turn into something I really enjoyed at the end. And that's something I really enjoy the breakbeat genre for. Like uh, you're just bringing samples together and seeing what you can make with it. And it's really pliable to any like anyone's taste. So really you just go explore with the sound, see what you can make, grab different sounds, grab different breakbeats. Put them into the tracker, see what you can come up with and you might be surprised with what you get. So I hope you enjoyed this one and if you think it's going to be useful for someone else definitely give it that thumbs up because it tells the algorithm to point it to other people. And yeah this was a bit of fun for me, I do enjoy the tracker so if you really enjoy tracker content definitely check out my other videos, I do go into a bit more of a deep dive into like each stage like the arrangement and all that. Leave a link up there. Also, definitely get the tracker packs and check out my gum road. I've got a few plugins now for the Polyan tracker. So, other than that, uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.